Sports brings you a special edition of the National Football League for this New Year's Day matchup. It's the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins on Monday night primetime. From beautiful South Florida, there's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup, as it'll be the Buffalo Bills taking on the Miami Dolphins. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. about ready to get us going. And we are underway from Hard Rock Stadium. This taken in right around the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Here is Tua Tungavailoa heading out to lead this Miami offense. If you ask coaches at any level to design their ideal leader of a team, I think they're going to check every box with this guy. He's got the poise to handle responsibility. He stays calm under any kind of pressure. And he brings out the best of his teammates each and every week. one play with a cornerback who's usually going to win that one the tight end but not there not in this situation how about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle first carry for Raheem Mostert and he'll get about three up past the 25 some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles but when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. And yeah, they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A lot of times when you get a magical third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end. And he comes through from picking up the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Tua going to throw. That one caught by Tyreek Hill. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Pretty solid run here on first down. Almost picked up another first, but he appears to be a few inches short. Any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before, they always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. That's complete to Mostert out of the backfield. And we'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. 
Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. Really a solid start here on the opening drive, Charles. He's now 4 of 4, and they're already in plus territory. Brandon, he's been so precise to start this game. Like we're watching an operation taking place right now. Master Surgeon at work. On first and 10, it's Mostert. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Second and five. Off a of play action, tongue of Iloa. This one complete to Jalen Warner. A nice little juke. And he's brought down after a very nice game. It's a game of 34. And the offense is saying to itself right now, only there all the season because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. Mostert. Will score. Touchdown, Miami. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And that makes it 7-0 Dolphins. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Raheem Mostert. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Out comes the offense for the Bills, led by their quarterback at six foot five. That's Josh Allen. And in this league, there are many quarterbacks who have their most success running the ball, while there are others who have big arms. There aren't too many guys who can do both. And at the end of many games, this guy leads his team not just in passing, but in rushing as well. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 26. Throwing to start the drive. Allen. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So five yards here, five on the play. And it's second down. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Throwing now is Allen. Little pitch and catch to the tight end, Knox. And Knox is going to have a Bills first down as the tackle going to be made up at the 37. They get six on the pickup there as the drive continues. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Allen to throw it. Got a man, that's Trent Sherfield. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Eight yards on the pickup. Brings up second and two at the 46-yard line. From the 46, here's second and two. On play action, Allen. And complete right side to Cook. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down.
shrugs him off. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 14 yards, and the Bills will get a new set of downs. If you're these receivers, you got to be ready because when he's going to throw it quick on that RPO, he's going to throw it quick. And this is why you spend time with your guy either in the offseason, during the week, the whole bundle. Because sometimes just telepathy. You both see the same thing, and he knows get the ball to him right away. First carry for a Central Florida alum, Latavius Murray. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 14-yard pickup. That's 14 yards on two straight plays. So back-to-back -back big runs picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. They didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher. That's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A stop there on third. They could have held him to three on this opening drive. Now they have to bow their necks on first and goal. If I'm looking at this from the offense's point of view, that's a big-time pickup right there, and I'd go right at him with another momentum play. I'd go quickly and attack him, because right now, they probably have their heads down a little bit since they didn't stop him on third down. Yeah, not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. Murray fighting, but he won't get too far. Maybe a yard, that's all, down to the two. Call it a gain of a couple. The defense stiffening here. It's third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say... And he takes it in across the chalk for a Bills touchdown. Latavius Murray taking it in from two yards out. And the Bills respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. And there's an offense that didn't panic after getting down early, and with good reason. No better way to silence a home crowd than with a nice, long, sustained drive. And they were able to put one together here and finish with the touchdown run. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And we are tied at seven. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it culminates with a Latavius Murray touchdown run. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So Miami coming out for their second drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now. But this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. They'll start on the ground with Mostert. 
And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Second down, here's Mostert again. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Two yards still to go, third down now. Looking to pass, Tua. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll go out of bounds. It looks like right at the 40. Two of the tie week for the Miami first. I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit, but 7-7. Seven to seven, They're flinging it around like crazy. Look at the drive that's going on here. Partner, we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to get advantage that way. Play action, now it's Tua. And he's got his man on the out route. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one good for 13 and a Dolphin first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. They fake the handoff, now Tua. This will be caught. It's Waddle. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A very solid gain of 27. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there. And they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Again, they will throw it with Tonga Bailoa. Another catch there for Waddle. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Second and a couple. Tua sets up to pass it. And that one going to come up short, low throw. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Here's Tua. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. They'll try it now with Mostert. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. But they only needed about four or five inches there, relied on the big guys up front, and got it done. Yeah, this is the time to just go ahead and hit it straight ahead. No juking, right? No movement in the backfield. Take the ball and go. As I heard a coach tell a a long time ago, save your dancer for the club, son. Just get up into that line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Now we got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in that auto partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Throwing now is Tungabailoa. And it's caught. 
A terrific job there to keep him out of the end zone. And now it'll be fourth and goal. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. They're going for it. Here's Tua with it. And then it's caught. Touchdown, Miami. Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Fourth and goal. The defense needed one more stand. They couldn't get it. I just wonder if they were thinking heavy run here in that situation instead of being able to play the pass. And they were beaten on that possession. Sanders on for the extra point. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyree Kill. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. So remember, Charles, last time they were out here, they scored, but they just saw the opposition score, and they're trailing right now, so they're trying to keep pace here. They need a touchdown drive. Well, if you're a fan of offense, you're loving this, but if you're a fan of defense, this is tough to watch, and it's also tough to keep that up when you just watch your opponent march down the field on a scoring drive that lasts into double-digit snaps. You need a score here not just to follow the momentum from your last drive, but put the onus back on your opponent, and that's what they're doing. And now to the races down the right side. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. A big play here for Buffalo. 42 yards. That is the exact right play call against that defense. So a hat tip to the offensive play caller because he won that part of the chess match. But give credit to his players as well. They won the execution part of it. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. They moved the ball over 50 yards between this play and the last one. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. A good run there by Cook on first down, powering his way forward, a gain of six. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. The Bills with a football as we start quarter number two. Second down and four. As they've got it as we resume action. Allen off the play fake. He will find Diggs in the end zone. Touchdown, Buffalo. Stephon Diggs. A 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Bills are an extra point away from drawing level. And in the red zone, I guess this is why you have a guy like that on your roster. Without a doubt, and if you have him, you use him because he's a guy who's going to win just about every time. I don't care what the coverage is. Here's Bass now for the extra point. Now we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So that drive, four plays. And it's finished off by the touchdown by Stephon Diggs.
This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And this will be a touchback. Barrios deciding not to bring it out. And out come the Dolphins now. And right now, we've got a little bit of an offensive masterpiece going on. Both sides moving the football, scoring points. It's almost like somebody put the defense on rookie mode in this one. I mean, we haven't even left the first half, Charles, and we're certainly on pace for a shootout. An excellent start for both offenses. The fans have to be enjoying this to seeing all these points go up on the board. As a former defender, you know I'm not enjoying this at all, but right now, both these teams just trading haymakers. Let's see if anyone slips up first. Can anyone counter with a nice little jab and get things going in their direction? Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be out right at the 35. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. A run with Mostert up the middle. And he'll have the Dolphins first down as the tackle made it about the 43-yard line. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. On first down, they go with Mostert again. And he'll take it across midfield and into Buffalo territory. 45 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second down and one. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. And now he appears to be in some pain. We'll get an update when we come back to Hard Rock Stadium. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now they'll throw with Tagovailoa. This one thrown underneath to Achan. So give him two yards there on the completion, and it's second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. A short throw there, that's to Smythe, the tight end. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. This drive has been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and 10. A quick throw there is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Second and 10. Running right, here's Achan. He'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Now he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Micah Hyde. And he'll take this all the way down inside the 40. And that felt like a little extra pressure on that third down attempt, and their mistake cost them points because they're inside the red zone. So you know you got at least a field goal waiting for you. And in this case, they end up with nothing. 
Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. They'll have very good starting field position here as they try to break our tie, and they start first and 10. So after the INT, it's Allen. There's Stephon Diggs for the catch on the slam. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. Oh, that's tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Allen going to try and throw on third down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bills first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short. Blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. First down. Here's the run with Cook. And just good downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15-yard line. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. The CD a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but, man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the center. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. Duke Riley, the blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump it for a loss of eight. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. So the shotgun snap to Allen. He's got this one complete to Sherfield. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. That'll go for a gain of seven. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. They're backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Third down, here's a run by Cook. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Defense simply not fooled by the draw there. Well, they were thinking run to begin with, and what they tell their defensive linemen is, play the run on your way to the quarterback. If someone shows, go get him, and that's exactly what they did. The kick by Bass is good, and the Bills have come back to regain the lead. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. So after knocking through the field goal, here's Bass to kick it away. And this will be a touchback. Barrios deciding not to bring it out. Miami's offense set and ready to go. In a close game like this, Charles, those interceptions like they had on the last drive could be costly, but here they've got another opportunity to seize control of this game. And they'd better take advantage of it because otherwise, if they end up losing by one score, they'll relive this over and over and over until they have another opportunity to wipe it away. 
Tua and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven. Pass the 30 to the 32. Ran the perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion. They would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is. And they passed him up to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Couple of Alabama guys here, two in a row for the Miami first. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds, because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? Now HN on first and 10. And he'll take it across midfield and into Buffalo territory. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Natua going to keep it on the draw. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. The Dolphins on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and six. Two are going to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. So on fourth down, here's Jake Bailey to punt for the Dolphins. Deontay Hardy back deep. And that will hit and continue on out of bounds. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Here's Allen on first and 10. And his throw is going to be incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Here's second and 10. Throwing now is Allen. Working the middle here, that's complete to Knox, the tight end. And able to get it across the 10 to the 15. They were looking for a cushion from that end zone. He gave it to him, 15 big yards. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. And now they have a little more space to maneuver from the 15, first and 10. To throw, it's Allen. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. Well, when I looked down, he was kind of shaking his head right after he threw that pass. So what did you see? Well, from a defense's perspective, anytime you have your eyes back towards the quarterback, you're in a position to make a play on the ball, whether it's a big-time play by you or an overthrow by the quarterback. You have a much better opportunity. Miami set to take over. And down by a field goal, they'll take over with excellent field position following the interception. Yeah. 
After the turnover, it's Tua. It's a slant to Hill. And he'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Looking to pass, Tua. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. And since the penalty occurred in the end zone, move the ball to the one-yard line. First and goal from the one-yard line. Costly penalty. So the ball's moved to about the one after the penalty. First and goal. A-chan, no signal, and now they say he did not get in. He is stonewalled at the one. No gain on the play, and it's going to be second and goal. I don't know about you, Brandon, but I often think to myself, in these situations, I want a back who can create his own space, who can break tackles, and in a sense, become his own blocker. We don't have that guy in the game right now. And he takes it into the end zone for the Dolphin touchdown. Devon Achan taking it in from a yard out. And the Dolphins have regained the lead. Sometimes offensive can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that will make this a four-point game. Touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to want to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Well, touch and time here critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. Now a second and ten. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. To the air, Allen. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Bills first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. And meanwhile, Allen's throw taken in by Diggs. 12 yards that time and a Bills first down. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep and curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole <laughs> cool. lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. On first down, Allen. 
And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop any like that one. Second down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. On second down, Cook. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Throwing his Allen on third. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 22-yard line. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. The throw out wide going to be incomplete. And their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Now Allen setting up the screen for Cook. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And they've used him in the passing game to great effect so far. Here they get it to him again on the screen, and it turns into a nice positive play. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. On play action, Allen. And he is caught and able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And they delivered there as that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set them up with a first and goal. Allen now looks to throw. Touchdown! James Cook, a five-yard touchdown. And the Bills will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up, and we have a tight game here. You know, we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf. Today is track shoes, because that's what we've seen with these offenses. <laughs> yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far, and fun to watch. An extra point by Bass, up and good. And that gives them a three-point lead. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And they'll have very good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. And the Dolphins with one final possession here in this first half. And with good starting field position and three timeouts as well in their pocket, no reason not to try and put a late scoring drive together. Good starting field position for the Dolphins as they have it first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Here's Tua. 
Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Tua sets up to pass it. It's Hill, complete. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Now second and five. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. That is caught at the seven. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. Not quite enough to get into the end zone, but what a nice play there. He makes the catch, tries to turn up field and get to the pylon, but doesn't quite get there. But they're going to be set up with a first and goal from very short range. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, you'll have to cut this at a tight angle. The kick by Sanders is good. So three points on the board, as easy a field goal as you're going to get, but I can see you shaking your head. I love that peripheral vision of yours, partner, because to me, if it's the fourth quarter and you're up six, I get it. But now, even if you run and don't get in, you're still setting them up to go a long field, 98, 99-yard drive. How do you look at your defense and not give them that opportunity? So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. Well, now, how about this return? So thanks to the late field goal, we are all tied up heading to intermission as we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone, to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. an even first half all tied on the scoreboard this fielded right at the goal line and he's up past the 20 to the 22 yard line well, the Bills offense set to take over to begin quarter number three this offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter well, quarters number one and two entertaining we saw some good offense points put up Charles and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now, here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them a first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. 
Throwing on first down is Allen. It's Knox, the tight end, making the catch. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. It's a gain of 13 and a Buffalo first down. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed. And on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. Allen now on first down. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. That time, Bradley Chubb shooting in there for the sack. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back. But now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. There's a nice move. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They give him seven yards on the play, and they do pick up the conversion on third down. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. And a missed tackle there as he pushes forward for a gain of four. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. Here's Allen. This ball tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate, maybe, to get that back. It's third down. Got to give some credit there. Able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and get some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. Allen. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And that could be one of those turning point plays in a ball game. A field goal gets you the lead here, but they want to make a statement and get six points. And they're certainly going to get that opportunity as they get the conversion and set up first and goal. Now Allen. There he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Josh Allen, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Bills have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Well, I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And they will take a seven-point lead. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. Braxton Berrios selected to bring it out. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. 
Well, Charles, you and I said in intermission, feels like we're set up for a good second half. Well, the other side scored. Now it's up to them to answer. How do they respond here with their first drive of the second half? Well, bottom line is they just saw the ball go in the end zone against their defense, and they saw what good offense looks like. They believe they've got a good offense as well. Run the best plays you've got to the top performers you have and try to move that ball down the field for an answering score. Now a dump off here complete. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. What I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 23, this is second and three. Throwing now is Tungamailoa. The short throw there, that's to Smythe, the tight end. He's now just three yards shy of 197 yards receiving on the contest and a first down. That was a round run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. On play action, here's Tua, and it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. In the early days of the NFL, you could easily blame these drops on maybe some uneven or uncertain lighting in a stadium. Not anymore. The lights are pretty good. Yeah, they're great here at night, but his second drop indeed, not a good look. Again, they will throw it with Tungabailoa. Over the middle, complete. It's Hill. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They right, call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. A run straight ahead with HM. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Second down at six now. Now Tua. And he'll complete this one to Barrios. Six yards, the pick up, and that's a first down. <laughs> Running left, HM. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Two are going to throw. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. He was waving his arms, won the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what'd you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, but <laughs> since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that. That's cold-blooded. Cold-blooded. <laughs> He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. Well, there were a couple of extra defensive backs in the game, so he really had nowhere to go with the football despite his search for an open receiver. So he has to take off and run for it, but he comes up well short of the line to gain. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Bills offense coming out, ready to take over. 
This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look at repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. From the 21, it's second and 10. Allen going to throw. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for not. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. To the air, Allen. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Tackle by Bradley Chubb, the number five pick in the 2018 draft. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. First target, first catch, and a first down. A gain of nine yards. Here's Allen to throw it. Working the middle here. That's complete to Knox, the tight end. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. The Bills passing game, getting him down the field. They've got another first down. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. And here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Back to the ground, Cook. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. From the 35, here's second and a couple. They run the counter with Cook. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Here's Allen on first and 10. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air, and defensively, they were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. Third quarter on a Monday night with a second and 10 coming up. So they fake the handoff, now Allen. He's got the hook up with Diggs. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. 23 yards on the play. And I'll tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal.
Now Allen. And that is incomplete. Now oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. Down near the goal line, things really get physical. You're always anticipating a running play, but when they do throw it, things happen quickly. A little bit of a bang-bang play there that falls incomplete. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Cook up the gut. Well, they'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. And Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. To throw, it's Allen. Dancing to his left. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Josh Allen taking it in from four yards out. And the Bills have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give him a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. An extra point by Bass, up and good. And the lead now up to 14. Dolphins 24. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. Berrios now from his end zone. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 18. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Third quarter from Miami. This is second and ten. Looking to pass. Tua. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. They give him ten that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice gain. The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. Tug of Iloa going to try and throw on third down. That is caught, and he is going to have the Dolphins first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. From the gun, it's Tua. Throw to the right, taken in by Barrios. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Oh, 
So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 45-yard line. Tua setting up shop to throw again. Over the middle, he gets it to Barrios. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. Tua sets up to pass it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. They'll get this into the hands of Hill. Complete. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyreek Hill with his second touchdown of the night. And the Dolphins are able to get a score back in the final stages of this third quarter. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? And, you know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Miami, where the fourth quarter will begin with a kickoff following the score of the final play of the third quarter. get it up across the 20 to the 21 yard line. James Cook running back out now. He stopped on the century mark already receiving the football, closing in on that on the ground too. They've really had trouble handling him. I think from what we've seen in this game, his success through the air has started to open things up for him on the ground because now he's loosened up the defense, right? They've got to play just about every snap as if another receiver can get downfield on them, and he's been that receiver. Now they bring him back to the backfield. I think his yardage running the ball will increase as this one goes on. Well, they might need to devote some extra attention to him, something just to stop the momentum he has. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football are you thinking about Super Bowl 51 <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England just, and they ended up giving it up I was gonna say don't say it but you did say it I did didn't I yeah anybody watching Atlanta our apologies Allen's throw here take it in by Knox so the completion good for seven there and yeah, that will bring up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. From the 43, it's second and three. Now a give running right, it's Cook. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. They sure 
sure went against conventional wisdom, calling a pass on third and inches. Had to be thinking to themselves, the defense is going to overcommit against the run. Should be an easy pitch and catch. Didn't turn out that way. Here's Sam Martin now, as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Here's Barrios. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially, and it'll be Dolphin football. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive, and it feels like the momentum has shifted. They scored, and their defense forces that last punt, and now a chance to tie the game on this possession. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 21. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. Here's Tua. And the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. And Oliver able to drop him for a loss of four from his defensive tackle spot. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. It's caught inside the 25. It's a big play there for Miami. 66 yards. <laughs> well, this game has certainly had no shortage of offense. Both teams have been wrapped up from the start. And here's yet another big play. Boy, both defenses have just got to be dragging out there because they've been run ragged throughout. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. That swung out to Mostert. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Give him maybe a yard, quite the opposite from the previous big gainer. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. On second down, Mostert. And despite the fancy footwork we saw, they'll get to him just inside the 15. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. On third down, here comes Mostert. And he'll be tackled right on the 10, well short of the first down. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. No sign of Tua departing. Fourth down. They're going for it. Fourth down, fourth quarter. Here's Tua. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. The Dolphins can't convert on fourth down. And the Bills are going to get the football back. So they converted their first two fourth down attempts. Not there. Now they're two for three. You think maybe the offense coordinator expended a little capital on that one? <laughs> you know, when you're two for yeah. two, Got you can lock confidence. it for that third one, right? Didn't get it there. Maybe now the head coach might not be so eager to go for it as we go forward. Allen and the Bills now with a first and ten from back at their own ten-yard line. Off the play fake. Allen. And in the most curious way, there to burn some clock. That was wild. And at the end of all that, it 
winds up a safety. At this point, I think it's a surprise when he isn't close to being sacked out of passing down. The amount of times he's hit the deck today, I think a lot of us are reading safety before they even took the snap. Simply a merciless pass rush every step of the game, and that rush earns a crowning achievement there. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. This is fielded at the 27. Tyreek Hill making his way back out towards the huddle. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Second and nine. Throwing now is Chugabailoa. It's Hill, complete. And Hill is going to have the Dolphins first down as he's up to the 45. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him, double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. And he'll get what he can up the middle, three yards, and that'll bring up second down. It may be only a gain of three yards, but that back, he deserves a lot more credit on the play. That could have easily been stopped at the line, but his vision and his determination found some space to turn it into that modest gain. Second down, here's Mostert again. And he'll take it across midfield and into Buffalo territory. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. Two are going to throw. And they'll get this on the screen to Mostert. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Miami first down on the 14-yard pickup. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide, and these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga by Lower. That's caught Waddle on the left side. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. And here we are in the fourth quarter. Paul going to watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there. Not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. A Mostert, a first down carry. This will wind up only getting him a couple. And it'll bring up second down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Second down and eight. Out of the gun, here's a give to Achan. Able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. But if you're going to have a relay race, you're probably going to pick your backs and receivers to run it. But don't underestimate the conditioning of the offensive line. They're out there just dictating things, staying on the field, and keeping a long drive going. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Now Tua. He's got his target. That's complete. And the Dolphins. 
defense are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trade in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Mostert. Oh, he's going absolutely nowhere as he is hit behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Sometimes being a linebacker in the middle of the field is kind of like being a doctor on the field. You got to make the right diagnosis. Here he correctly sends his run and shoots through to make the play in the backfield. On second down, Tua. Boy, that was lockdown coverage there. He's scanning for someone to come open. But that was great work to blanket everyone. And in the end, he's just got to throw it away. For the lead, here's third and goal. Back to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Touchdown! Tua fighting his own out of there to teammate Jalen Rowe. And the Dolphins have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. So now a big play here as the Dolphins will go for the two. Two are going to try and throw for it. And no, incomplete. They can't convert. So they tried to bump the lead up to a field goal. Instead, it stays at one here in the fourth. After the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. On the return, Deontay Hardy. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. to the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 22. Throwing to start the drive. Allen. His throw incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. to the air. Allen. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over at that time, and it's going to lead to third down. And over the dime went on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Allen. Steps away, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. More than one defender there, and that's a loss of five on the sack. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has not received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Here's Sam Martin now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Fair catch called for and made at 
about the 32-yard line. Jalen Waddle, the speedster wide receiver, brings out this offense. He's been a load for them to handle defensively. I know that much. Well, look at him. He's got seven catches on the game, and he's starting to shred them a little bit because not only is he catching them, he's picking up good yardage, keeping the chains moving, ball control, you name it. This big guy, what did you say? He's been a load for them to handle? That's right. He's Agreed. A, a seven catches, as you said, over 100 yards. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and 10. And this is incomplete. Oh, he looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. Oh, man, late in the tight ball game, every play so critical. You feel like you've got to find a way to come up with that football. That was put in a great spot, but it just didn't want to stick in his hands. That's a big letdown. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. A critical error there in a tight game in the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. Got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. So after the INT, it's Allen. Out to the left, he's got his tight end Knox. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. And the question now, how do they want to work the clock here on first and goal? A field goal would give them the late lead. Allen. Yeah, he's got it. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, He's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. Cook is in. Touchdown, Bills. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. Allen will try to throw for it, and he's got it. So the two-point conversion is good, and they add on to their fourth quarter lead. So they go with a pass there on the two-point try and able to convert it, Charles. And a good job by the offense figuring out their two-point play and using it well. It's interesting how people are using the strategy nowadays, though, isn't it? It really is, and I don't know how much that one, that particular play factored in, but with the PAT moving back in 15-16, that kind of changed things, didn't it? It's really a part of everyone's strategy now. When I talk with coaches and when we sit with them, they always talk about they actually have two-point periods in practice now, something they never really did before. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. They now trail by seven after that last touchdown here in the fourth quarter. What a big spot for this offense. See if they can cobble something together on this drive. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 24. 
He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. We talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Oh, and Tua going to be intercepted for the third time. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. That's where they'll take over. Agreed. That's twice now in this fourth quarter. As a quarterback, a lot of times you think it's all on you to make plays when you're losing. And here, the play's not there, but he throws it anyway. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. And down to the 36-yard line here. 72 yards rushing for him now to this point. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. They run it again with Cook. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So it's Bill's football here as we get your reset. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Up the middle, Murray. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Second and 12, and you'd have to assume another all-out effort to stop the run is coming. They'll try the middle with Cook. And a short gain down to about the 33. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. What do they have for this? Third and 11. Try to take this home. They'll run. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to perhaps salt this one away. The kick by Bass is good. And the Bills will add on to their lead. So that one CD going to make the road back a lot more difficult. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know they were praying on the other sideline for a miss because now, as you pointed out, a very difficult road. Down two scores. You don't just need a touchdown. You need a chain of events to go your way. You've got to score, somehow get the ball back, and score again. The odds of that happening, not great in your favor. Tyler. 
So after knocking through the field goal, here's Bass to kick it away. Barrio is going to bring this out of the end zone. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. So Tua and the Dolphins down by 10. A little over a minute to go. They'll need a score here and also likely an onside kick recovery. But first things first, first and 10. Here's Tua. And let's face it, this defense has had a share of struggles all game long, and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two-minute drill. Excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion. Inside a minute to go. Here's second and ten now. Now Tua. Connecting with Hill. And he'll be dropped at the 36. It's a good gain of 18 on a play that originated back at the 18. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. A lot of practice time, a lot of thinking goes into two-minute drills, even on the defensive side. So now you want to make sure the guys understand. Continue to be aggressive, but make sure you're smart in doing so. Another try, second and ten now. Throwing to a... That'll be caught by Hill. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills 39. And partner, they're locked in man coverage out left and they end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slam. He's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field. And that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. Well, this was a fun one today if you like points. A lot of them went on the board. Both offenses were clicking. Charles, these defenses, meanwhile, have a little something to clean up before their next contest. Yeah, neither end zone had a stop sign in it, did they? I mean, for both sides, visit it, and with frequency. Not fun to be a defensive player, but on the offensive side of the ball, those guys had a blast. One team came away with a victory, even better for them. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From South Florida, good night, everybody.